Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Echo Life. Let's get the joy of the Lord going in this place. Are you free this morning? Come on. Oh, 
Jesus for your goodness this morning. Come on, we enter his gates with praise and thanksgiving today. And we know who we are worshiping and why we are worshiping for his faithfulness, for his goodness. Come on, just as we right now fix our eyes and hearts on him, we choose praise this morning. Sing what he has done.
You just needed to speak the name of Jesus. You needed to speak the name of Jesus for yourself. You needed to speak the name of Jesus for the people around you. I don't want to move on from a moment, so I just wonder if we can do this for ourselves. I want to go back and sing that bridge. Because Jesus is moving in this room. He's moving in this city. He's moving in your families. So come on, in this place, we are contending for us. We're contending for our marriages. We're contending for our children. We're contending for our neighbors. We're contending for our coworkers. This morning, we us sing Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for you with this that he is in this place today and he is in the business of making things right and making things whole come on let's give him praise again amen amen you can go ahead and have a seat give someone a high five around you real quick as you take a seat this morning just tell him you look good today you looking good my name is Susanna. I'm one of the pastors here, and it is a joy to welcome you in. Every single week, someone lets us know that they are joining for the first time. Can we put our hands together and welcome those who are with us for the first time today? Man, we are so grateful, so grateful, and so grateful that the Holy Spirit is with us. He is speaking, and God's Word is alive and active, meaning, you know what? He has something to share with you today. So many times after Sundays, I'll walk around and someone will be like, oh my goodness, you, you won't believe what I just felt from the Holy Spirit today. And then I walk to the next person, they're like, I don't, you won't believe what just I, I heard from God today. And I'm like, they're two different things, but I'm like, that's what it means when we talk about God's word is alive and active because God has something to speak for you today that might be different than the person next to you. But I want us just to do this. As Pastor Joe gets ready to come and share this morning, just to be intentional, that God wants to speak to you. He loves you. He sees you. And just as we prepare, just say, God, I want to hear from you today. Maybe you've never heard from God before. Maybe you need something new and fresh from him. But just ask. He loves to give generously. Take a moment. Let's invite the Lord close. And let's check out what's happening here at Echo Life. Check this video out.
Hey Echo Life, my name is Jordan and it is an honor to welcome you in this morning. Here at Echo Life, it is our heart to provide a place where you can encounter God and be empowered so that you can make an eternal impact in the world around you. We hope you will encounter God today throughout the service and we have been praying for you that you would experience a breakthrough this morning. If you are joining us this morning for the first time, welcome. We would love to connect with you and get to know you. Take a moment to complete the connect card in the seat in front of you and let us know that you're here and how we can be praying for you. You can also stop by the guest area in the lobby and connect with a team member. We have a special gift just for you. Today is next steps. If you're ready to move from the seat to a team here at Echo Life, the next steps is where we want you to be. It is our greatest joy to help you connect your unique gifts with the calling God has placed on your life. During Next Steps, you'll hear about why we exist as a church and how you can be utilized and how God designed you to make a difference in the world around you. All you have to do is show up. Lunch and child care is already covered for you. Did you know that we have over 6,000 homeless in Escambia County and 60% of those are children? That's why it is important to recognize the work of Family Promises of Escambia County, a nonprofit organization that strives to provide assistance and guidance for those in our community struggling to make ends meet. Family Promises is making a tangible difference in the lives of homeless and low-income families. By providing housing assistance, support, and hope, they are helping to build a stronger and more resilient community. Church, thank you for your generosity and prayers that has allowed us to support Family Promises from the very start. Go ahead and save the date for our next Encounter Night on November 1st. Encounter Night is a time of in-depth worship and teaching and ministry time as well. Encounter Night begins at 6 p.m. on November 1st. Now, let's get ready to dive into the Word of God as Pastor Go comes to share. so good to see you. Come on, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. So excited you're here. Uh, this is week two of our series called Love Where You Live. Love Where You Live. Matter of fact, we have a huge map out in our lobby, and I would love for you this Sunday over the next two following Sundays to put a pin where you live, and we're going to create this a beautiful mosaic, and we're going to hang it up in our lobby for a while. But man, what an opportunity for us to, to celebrate where we are and what God is doing. You know, I believe love where you live is more than a statement. It's a suggestion that whether you like it or not, you are here now. And we believe God has you here on purpose for a purpose. So can we just celebrate where we live? Listen, I, I know Pensacola has its problems. I'm not naive to that. I know there's things that we need to address, but for a moment, can we just focus on the positive things of Pensacola? Yes. We are America's first settlement. That's right. The very first ever documented worship service happened right here 464 years ago. We are the home cradle of naval aviation, the home of the Blue Angels. We are now the, the new permanent home for American Magic Sailing Team. We are the home of the league best four-time champion Pensacola Ice Flyers. We are home of the two-time Southern League champion Blue Wahoos. We are the home of the University of West Florida, the national champion Argos. Love where you live. <laughs> Pensacola is ranked one of the 100 top best cities to live in America. Forbes says that we're one of the top 10 cities to live in Florida. TripAdvisor says we're one of the top 24 beaches in America. And did I mention the people? Come on, I believe the friendliest, the prettiest. 
Most generous people in the world live right here in Pensacola. Come on, love where you live. And I realize some of us, uh, you're living here today and it's not your choice. <laughs> Whether you're in school, uh, a minor, maybe in the military, you're a force here. You're here. But I, I'm so thankful that you're at church today in this season, investing in your faith. And my prayer for you is to continue to do that, to get plugged in, to make most of the time you have here. Let us love you and let us send you to the next destination, cheering you on for all that God's doing in your life. That's our hope and that's our prayer. But this is what we believe. We believe God wants to bless Pensacola. And I believe God will bless Pensacola through his church through his church. And last week we had Vision Sunday. And man, if you missed that message, go back on our archives, check that out. But I shared the vision of our church. I want to share it again this morning that we exist to echo the life-changing message of Jesus so that others may encounter God, live empowered, and make an eternal impact. How do we do that as a church? Not only do we believe God will bless Pensacola through the church, God will bless Pensacola through you because you are the church. So you have a part to play in seeing Pensacola look a lot like heaven. You have a part to play. And this is how we say it here. I mentioned it last week. It'll, it'll be our foundation for the next several weeks. But we believe our church will move, will grow, will bless our city based on the persistence of your prayers and on the pace of your generosity and involvement. Simply put, when you pray, when you give, when you go, we'll be a blessing to our city. You'll be a blessing to your neighbor. You'll be a blessing to your family and your sphere of influence around you. We're gonna pray, we're gonna give, we're gonna go right where we are to love where we live. And today we're gonna focus on prayer. And we're going to look how a prayer radically changed the circumstances of Peter and how if we pray, we can do the same for others. So this is found in Acts chapter 12. Uh, so you can open up your Bible, you can open up your app, or you can open up your eyes and see the screen behind me, okay? But we're in Acts 12 today, and the church is growing but this is where we see, in, in starting in verse 3, when Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people. What pleased them? Well, if we go back, we see they were pleased over the persecution of Christians. They were pleased over the beheading of the apostle James. And it reminds me this morning of the persecution of Christians all around our world. We're reminded that there's Christians in Palestine, there's Christians in Israel, I want you to know, church, that we're sponsoring and supporting missionaries in Israel right now that I can't tell you their name, and I can't tell you what they're doing for their own safety and security. But church, we need to gather together and pray. Matter of fact, with this reminder, let's pause and pray right now. Father, we pray for the Christians that are being persecuted all around the world. Lord, we pray for the Christians in, in Palestine and Israel. Lord, we pray for their safety and their protection. And Lord, we pray that even under persecution, as we've always seen, faith grows. Your word is spread and is salvation to many. Lord, we pray for our military servicemen and women that are, that are caught up in these matters. And Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for the nation of Israel and Lord, we pray for our missionaries uh, that are out in the field right now, that you would protect them and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's keep continuing, church, to, to pray for them. But we see here that Peter's arrested. This took place during a holiday, during a time of celebration. No celebration happening now. Then he was imprisoned, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The church was growing. Peter's the clear leader. But now Peter's in prison. And this is a pivotal time. Because Herod is thinking, man, if I could 
stop Peter, maybe this whole Christianity thing will fizzle out. And the question is, how will the church respond in the face of persecution? What do we do? Acts 12, 5 lets us know that while Peter was in prison, the church prayed. The church prayed. Prayed. The times we are living in demand a move of God, and it starts with prayer. Church, we need to pray first. We need to pray first. Notice what the church didn't say. They didn't say, well, Peter's in prison, prison, but let's see how this trial plays out. Let's lawyer up and let's trust the legal process. They didn't do that. They didn't say, well, Peter's in prison and really we should just pack up and go home because there's no hope. Because there's, there are four guards around him all the time, rotating shifts. And what happens would be two guards chained to Peter and then two guards at the door. Human escape would be impossible. They didn't say that. What did they say? The first thing we need to do is respond in prayer. We need to pray. In 1912, Clarence Crane was in trouble. See, he created a chocolate company in Ohio, but he noticed that his sales dropped dramatically in the summer because nobody wanted to buy his melted chocolate. So he had to do something different, something different far from what he's ever done before. And he decided to create a summer candy one that wouldn't melt. And after he created it, it made a ring shape. And he said, you know what? This looks like a lifesaver ring. So I'm gonna name this Lifesaver Candy. And it eventually became the five colors that we know of cherry and raspberry and watermelon and orange and pineapple. He created Lifesaver Candy. His first slogan for this candy, I love this, for that stormy breath. That's good. I have two thoughts when it comes to bad breath. One, bad breath is better than no breath at all. And if somebody offers you a mint, you take it, okay? For that stormy breath. His first response was to do something different something that that he wasn't accustomed to. He had to step out, try something different. For some of you, when you face a storm in your life, you do something that you always have done. Maybe you try to fix it yourself. Maybe you, you take what's going on and you just run to other people and complain about what's happening. And I'm encouraging you to do, just like Clarence Crane did, do something different. How about we respond first in prayer? We want things to be fixed. We want things to change in our life. We must pray first. Remember, prayer should never be our last resort. It should be our very first response. Pray first. That's what Paul urged Timothy to do in 1 Timothy 2, 1. I urge you, first of all, to pray. Pray to the Lord. Pray to him with the problems that you're facing. Pray for the people around you. Why? Because what we do first shows priority in our lives. You coming to church on a Sunday, the very first day of the week, shows priority, that your faith is important to you. When you give to the Lord of your very first, before it goes to bills, before it goes to anything else, you give to the Lord that shows priority in your life. And praying first, shows top priority in trusting Jesus. It's relying on the trusted relationship of God in your life. It's you and God, and there's a relationship there, and you go to him because you know he's always available, always willing, always ready to hear your prayers. So we have to remind ourselves that prayer isn't a button to push. It's a relationship to pursue. And when we pray, it reminds us that we're not in control and it keeps us close to the one who is. That is the the power of praying. But where do we start? 
you got to know this, that prayer is simply talking to God. So the challenge I put before you is, is start talking to God. Come on, what if we are all committed to two minutes a day, starting there. If you've never prayed, start two minutes a day talking to God. It can be in a conversational tone, talking to God. If you're new to this, maybe, maybe start with the Lord's Prayer and let that be a roadmap. Internalize that prayer and begin to pray that to the Lord. Here's a suggestion. Start, start with two minutes a day, but think of this. Think of this as the word talk. Four things that you can do in two minutes to pray to the Lord. Just as a jump start to make it a priority in our lives. The first is this. Thank God for what he's already done. Come on, you have a million reasons to give thanks to God. Lord, thank you for the breath in my lungs. Lord, thank you for what I do have. Thank you for the people around me. Praise him before anything else happens. We, we praise him and say, thank you, Lord. Then you can go to A, and that's ask God for provision. Big or small, you ask the Lord for whatever you need. Because he's a loving father who wants to know what's going on in your life. And even before you pray, he already knows, but he loves hearing it from you. Remember, it's a relationship. It's talking to him. Then L is to pause and listen to the Holy Spirit talk to you. Maybe in a whisper, maybe in a gentle nudge, but sometimes the point of prayer isn't to move God, it's to move you. Say, Lord, who do you want me to bless today? Lord, who do you want me to talk to today? Lord, who do I need to forgive today? And allow room for the Holy Spirit to, to talk back to you and, and to hear from him. And then K is to know. Know that God is your father. Know that he is totally for your good. And know that he is holy for you. I mean, just, you just know that God is, God is your father. He's totally for you and holy there for your good. A fruitful prayer life requires this conviction to knowing that God is for you that he loves you, and that we are praying to a heavenly father that has good things in store for you. This is about submission. This is about surrender. This is not my will, but your will be done, Lord. And we take this moment to show it's a priority, to show the importance of prayer in our lives. Two minutes a day is a place we can all start. But, but listen, don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid to pray imperfect prayers. Matter of fact, there's no wrong way to pray. The only mistake is to not pray at all. So we're going to pray first, church. Come on, we need to be a church known that whatever we're going through, we're going to pray first. Start talking to God. Then we see this, that we also need to pray continually. Pray continually. In verse 5, if we go back, it says, while Peter was being kept in jail, the church never stopped praying to God. As soon as they heard he was imprisoned, they prayed. But the whole time while he was in prison, they kept on praying. It wasn't just a one and done prayer. It was keep on keeping on praying. And Paul encourages us again in 1 Thessalonians to simply pray continually. Pray fervently. Pray without ceasing. And what that means is that prayer is a lifestyle, not an event. Prayer must be a lifestyle for us. God wants an ongoing connection with you in good times and in bad. It is a lifestyle. During World War II, Lifesaver produced over 23 million boxes of Lifesavers to put in soldiers' meal ration kits. They did this as a way to give them a treat and give them a sweet taste of home. So many people were behind this effort and initiative that other candy companies donated sugar to Lifesaver so they can keep up the production to keep blessing soldiers. But remember, Lifesavers got their name because they looked like a Lifesaver ring. And a Lifesaver candy can provide a sweet taste of home, but a lifesaver ring 
can bring a sailor back home. On August 8, 1942, Elgin Staples was a sailor on the USS Astoria in the Pacific. That night, his ship was hit by enemy fire, and he was thrown off the ship, but he didn't drown because he had a lifesaver ring around him. He was eventually picked up by a ship. Then that ship sunk as well, and he was back in the water. Again, safe because he had a lifesaver ring, but he was rescued a second time by the USS President Jackson. And that's when he was on that boat, he looked at his lifesaver and realized printed on it that it was manufactured in his hometown of Akron, Ohio. So he kept that lifesaver ring with him. Eventually he made it home back to Akron, Ohio and he told his family and he told his mom Vera the story of what happened. And she began to be shocked as he was telling the story because as a way to do her part, she took on the wartime job at the manufacturing plant that made those lifesaver rings. She took that job to do her part and she became the inspector as she inspected every single lifesaver that went out of that manufactory. She prayed over each one. Her son brought to her his lifesaver ring and she looked at it and saw her inspection number stamped on that ring. The very ring that she inspected, the very ring that she prayed over saved her son's life. Her actions, her prayers made a difference. It's who she was. It's the type of lady she was. She modeled prayer. It was a lifestyle for her. And I want you to know, prayer must be a lifestyle for you so it can be a lifesaver for someone else. It must be a lifestyle to continually pray. Who knows how many lifesavers she inspected? Who knows how many prayers she prayed? But she kept on praying to pray without ceasing. It centers us. It reorders our priorities. It fills us with joy. It covers us with peace. It helps us extend grace. It stands in the gap for others. Church, we must keep on praying. God chooses to work through people in prayer. That's how he reveals his glory. That's how things are accomplished in his kingdom. So we must pray first. We must pray continually. We also must pray big. The church in that moment, when Peter was in prison, they invited God into the problem and they prayed big prayers. How do we know they prayed big prayers? They must have prayed big prayers because there's a big answer to that prayer. As we see in the story in verse seven and verse 10, suddenly, I love that, because it was suddenly to Peter, but it was the consistent prayers of others that, that eventually got to someone else's suddenly. Come on, how many prayers are you praying today that you'll hear the story and you'll hear the testimony of for someone suddenly it clicked? Suddenly God moved in their lives and you need to grin at that moment knowing it's your faithful prayers that got someone else to that suddenly. Suddenly there's a bright light in the cell. The angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him. Come on, I feel like I've been struck in like this by Susanna at times when I'm snoring. I felt like I've gotten that same holy nudge. Quick, stop snoring. I meant quick, get up. <laughs> and the chains fell off his wrist. They passed the first and second guard post and came to the iron gate leading to the city and it opened up for them all by itself. Yes, we have to pray big prayers. Your big prayers bring hope to the hopeless. Yes. Your big prayers loosen the chains off those that are in bondage. Your big prayers 
swing wide open doors for others. You have to pray big. Why? The prayers you pray behind closed doors could be breaking down doors for someone else. If prayer isn't required to accomplish your goals, you aren't thinking big enough. And how we pray reveals what we believe about God. And we have a big God, so we need to pray big prayers. Dream big, think big, pray big. Let's never insult God with small prayers. This isn't go big or go home, it's go home and go big in prayer. So Peter walked out of there, even though he had all the guards around him, even though there's all these posts and the iron gates, he made it through and he walked down the street and this is what we see in verse 13. He knocked at the door in the gate of where the church was praying. They're meeting in a home, they're praying and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, I love this, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter's standing at the door. He's like, could you let me in, please? I love that. The whole church was praying, but we get one name mentioned. Who prayed big for Peter? My money's on Rhoda. She was overjoyed. And she was praying big to the Lord. And even though she was surprised, she wasn't that surprised because she knew the power of her God. And what I love about Rhoda is she would be a footnote to many. This young, poor servant girl, she's just answering the doorbell. But she was part of prayer. And that's what got her mentioned in the Bible. And that's what became her reputation. That's what we're left to be known for is she was a woman of prayer and she prayed bold prayers. She didn't just believe God for open doors. She believed him for an open heaven, for him to do what only he could do, to pour out miracles. She prayed big. The power of prayer is not the words we pray. It's who we pray to, a big God who can answer big prayers. James 1, 6 says, ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. We got to up our prayer game, church. We got to pray big prayers. We got to pray bold prayers because bold prayers honor God and God honors bold prayers. So here is a question for all of us. What are you praying for that requires faith from you and power from God? If every prayer you, answer, you prayed this last week was answered, would the world be changed? It's time to pray bold prayers. What can your prayers do? Your prayers can calm the storm. Your prayers can heal the sick. Your prayers can be, bring comfort to those that are hurting. Your prayers can save a marriage. Your prayers can restore what's broken. Your prayers can push back darkness. Scripture says the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. When you pray, things happen. When we pray, things get done. Rhoda prayed, listen, for who was in her town, who was in her neighborhood, she prayed for who was just down the street from her. So let's look at this from one last angle. And let me ask you one more question. Who can you pray for that is close to you but far from God? Who can you pray for that is close to you but far from God? And I'm praying right now that the Holy Spirit would flood your mind with those people you need to pray for. Maybe it's your spouse that's not here with you today. Maybe it's a child that, that grew up in the faith but are far from it right now. Maybe that coworker that is an absolute thorn in your side. Maybe it's somebody in your life group that you know is just going through it right now. I'm telling you this church, this church is about prayer. 
And even this week as I was preparing for this message, I, I was reminded of all the prayers written all over this building that you can't see. And I went back through my photos and I looked at the prayers and I want to share some of the prayers that are written on the studs and the floors and the beams of this building. Here's one. May this be a place of hope, peace, love, and a refuge for all those who are lost. God, may we see the people on the back row. If you're sitting on the back row this morning, I want you to know those are holy seats. And you've been prayed for already. Here's a prayer for my son. I hope that this church will give life to people. There's a beam we all had a chance to sign this time last year. And purposely, it's it's framed up as you walk into the next steps room. And this is the blessing written on it. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. If you've ever been in Next Steps and you're looking for a church home, I want you to know you've been prayed for. Before you ever got here, we've been expecting you and we've been praying for you. And it's the literal foundation of this church. We pray first. We pray continually. We pray big. When you keep reading the book of Acts, the the story of the church, the church keeps growing. Peter makes it through. Then Paul gets on the scene shortly after. And he had a radical, radical conversion and he becomes a minister as well. And the church is even growing to further regions. And then Paul is imprisoned. And then he gets on a boat set sail for a trial in Rome where ultimately it will be his end. And he's on a boat with 275 other souls and they're headed straight for a hurricane. This is the last chapter of the book of Acts, but prayer is still the foundation. And in verse 24 of Acts 27, The angel said in response to Paul's prayers, don't be afraid, go in God's goodness. He's answered your prayer. He's granted safety not only for you, but everyone you're sailing with. Paul's life was in a mess. He was in a lot of trouble. He didn't wait until things got better. He didn't wait until he felt more qualified. He prayed first. He prayed continually. He prayed big. And God answered his prayers in the midst of the storm. And he prayed not just for himself. He prayed for everyone there with him. Paul had a lifestyle of prayer that became a lifesaver for others. I want you to know I know you're going through something too. But God will use what you pray in your storm to help others in their storms. That we always have to be mindful of those around us need prayer too. And, and guess what? The story, you know, this, the ship still broke apart. They were still in the storm and things weren't looking up. But in verse 40, 44, the rest, everybody, all 276 total people. Those who couldn't swim, they got there on planks, on other pieces of this broken ship. And in this way, everyone reached land safely. Through prayer, God can get you to your destination. Through prayer, God can help others get there. What you feel like is a broken situation, when you feel like you're not qualified to pray, God can use those broken pieces to still get people there safely. Even in your brokenness, even in your storms, your prayers can be a lifesaver for others. So keep offering those prayers to the Lord. Keep praying. And today I told you every week we're gonna have a challenge. Everybody, not only can you put a pin in the map, but when you walk out of here, you're gonna grab a card. It's got a lifesaver attached to it. That's for you to enjoy. 
offering so those take prayers it for the life everybody. Not it. only can you put a pin to in pray the map, for ten people, but when you walk out of here, you're going to grab a card that you know it's got a lifesaver that are close to, to you, you to enjoy. God. Offering so those take prayers it for the life everybody. everybody. Not God's only can you put a pin to pray in the way that you can walk, you walk out of here, you're going to grab a card for others. It's got a lifesaver that are close to you. For them to come and know the Lord. For them to have a hearing in their lives. For them to see the powerful working power of God in their lives. So take this challenge card, pray for 10 people and watch and see what God can do. It will happen. God will deliver them. Salvation will be theirs. He will provide. Come on, he will bring healing. He will bring answers and direction. He will bring his grace and mercy even in the midst of the storm, you'll make it through. Even in the midst of bondage, you can be set free. I want you to know, church, that someone could be one heartfelt prayer away from life change. I want you to know, church, your prayer for someone could be the absolute lifesaver for them. Let's not ever neglect the opportunity we have. Come on, church, let's pray together. Father God, oh, may prayer be a lifestyle for us. Oh, so that it can be a lifesaver for others. Lord, we are committed to praying first, to keep on keeping on and praying continually. And we're gonna step our game up and pray big, bold prayers because we serve a big God who cares. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I'm just overwhelmed in my own life. So thankful for the people who had prayer as a lifestyle, who threw out a lifesaver to me. Thank you for extending grace to me. Thank you that when I could have sunk, I could have drowned, I could have been lost at sea, I was saved by your wonderful working power. Oh, today, those that need to grab a hold of your love today, would you join me in this prayer? Would you take hold of the grace of God in your life? And today can be the day of salvation for you. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for offering forgiveness of my sins. Today I take a hold of what you're offering and I say yes to you. And I invite you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. And from this day forward, I'll live in gratitude. I'll live a lifestyle of prayer so that I may save others as well. In Jesus' mighty name, church, amen, amen. Come on, let's, let's stand together right now and just worship God and praise him for what he's doing.
Listen, we're going to continue this time. This is how we just respond to what the Lord is speaking. We respond first through worship back to Him. If you call Echo Life your church home and you want to give today to people like Family Promises, you can do that going online or dropping it off. Give us that connect card. Let us know how we can be praying for you. And then our team is here on the left side of the room. Do not leave this place if there is someone you've been praying for, something you have been believing for. Come on, let's just continue to worship the Lord together this morning. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it Turn it for good. Yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see you. Have a victorious week and we'll see you next Sunday.